Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Gabby and today we're gonna be starting on a reading vlog for the new Emily Henry book, Happy Place, which this is looking to be one of, if not the biggest romance book of the year. Like I'm just seeing this book absolutely everywhere online and Emily Henry has really become that bitch, if you know what I'm saying. Because this is gonna be the fourth adult romance book that Emily Henry has published so far and this is one that I am so excited and so freaking intrigued to read. You might be wondering what my thoughts are on the previous three Emily Henry adult romance books. I have the slightly unpopular opinion where I didn't love Beach Read. Like Beach Read was just okay for me. It was like a three star. I didn't dislike it really, but it just wasn't a favorite. Like this one's definitely my least favorite of the three that I've read so far. And then out of these two, Book Lovers is definitely like my number one favorite. I honestly think it'll be pretty tough for Miss Emily Henry to beat Book Lovers. Like Book Lovers is just so top tier for me in every way. Like this book ended up in my top three favorite books of last year. But then I also really loved People We Meet on Vacation. Like this one was an easy five star for me. This one also made it into my favorite books of the year that I read it. So like I really do genuinely love both of these books with my whole freaking heart but Book Lovers still for sure takes the cake. And so I'm definitely curious to see where Happy Place is gonna fall for me. Like is this one gonna end up being a new favorite? Can it live up to all of the hype? We'll just have to see. However though before we do jump into the reading vlog I would just like to thank today's sponsor which is Skillshare. You may know Skillshare for their classes in a lot of creative things like photography and illustration, but what you might not know is that Skillshare has a lot of career-focused classes as well. I think now more than ever we're starting to realize that traditional jobs are not a one-size-fits-all, and now is the perfect time to start designing a career that fits you best. I know that thinking about our future can be really intimidating, but I also think that no goal is too small, and I think it takes a lot of pressure off when you just tell yourself that you're gonna start small and start doing something for yourself. I think Skillshare makes it easy to learn at your own pace you know, and you can really take it step by step. I recently just started taking this class called Productivity for Creatives, Build a System that Brings Out Your Best. And this is a class that is really interesting to take because I love learning from other people who are creators on the internet. I love learning about different things like how to have a more professional mindset about things and how to better use your time because time is really of the essence when you're a creator. Like what you choose to put your time into really matters. And so I've found this class really helpful. I really love that Skillshare has a lot of really great time management classes, which is something I think that I struggle with quite a bit sometimes as a content creator. But again, if that class does not interest you for whatever reason, they do have so many other classes, whether those are more career focused type of classes or the really fun and cool creative kind of classes as well. So the first 1000 people to click the link down in my description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare's membership so that you can explore your creativity as well. And thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. And now let's get to the reading vlog shall we?
the day is here and I have finally started reading Happy Place. I've been looking forward to this day that I knew I was going to start this book for so long because Emily Henry just has such a beautiful way with words with her romance books. Like, I don't know, I'm always just really drawn to her adult romance books. And this one, I am updating you because I'm about 106 pages in already. Like, just this morning, I've just been laying here in bed. You know, I made a quick breakfast and then I lit some candles in my room and I've just been sitting here reading for a little bit. And this one feels similar to her previous romance books, but also really different. So in this story, we're following this woman named Harriet, and she is a nurse, and she has these really two close best friends. And so one of her closest friends in this book, her family owns this cute little cottage in Maine where they go all the time. And what's interesting about this book is that we're following, you know, Harriet is like our main character, but then also there's this guy named Wynne, and he was her fiance recently, but they they've recently broken up and it's been a few months since they've broken up and they haven't told any of their closest friends that they're not together anymore because they just haven't had the time or like the heart to tell them that they're not together because they've always been like a really close group of friends. And now, you know, this girl, her family is going to be selling this cottage. Like their family's not going to own the cottage anymore. And so this is going to be like their last trip that they're taking all together at this cottage that has been such a huge part of all of their lives. And so we kind of get like a fake dating situation because, you know, even though they were actual fiancés, like they were actually engaged to each other, but they haven't told any of their friends that they've broken up. And because this is like their last trip altogether, they don't want to like ruin the freaking vibes with all their friends. So they're pretending like they're still engaged, which, okay, I love it. I'm here for that. I love, you know, like fake dating is like one of my favorite romantic tropes to read about. And I like that they were actually previously engaged. And now that they're broken up, they're having to act like they're engaged again. And so naturally there's a lot of really great tropes within that as well because they have to like, you know, pretend to be still like touchy-feely with each other in front of their friends, you know, sharing the same bedroom because they're all staying at this cottage together. I also really like, you know, because I'm not the biggest fan of, you know, second chance romance books. Like second chance romance is usually one of my least favorite romance tropes. But what I do like about this book and with Emily Henry's books in general is that we do get flashback chapters in between the chapters of the present day where we get to see, you know, like how they first met. Like we do get to see almost right away, one of the first scenes in this book is a flashback of like how they actually first met, which was super cute by the way. Like I loved their first couple of conversations. And then I like that, you know, in between every chapter that we're getting of them together in this like last trip, we do get some flashbacks. So it makes it easier for me to root for a couple in a second chance romance if we do get those chapters flashing back so I can like see the beginnings of their relationship. I also love too in the flashbacks how even when they first met um, it was kind of a very forbidden romance between them because he has this like rule where like he doesn't date his friends because he doesn't want like anything messy to happen or like relationships to get ruined and so they kind of have this thing right when they meet where there's already such tension between them but it's very like forbidden because you you know that they don't want to like date each other because of how it could affect their friendship group. I also thought it was so cool. Um, I don't think this is a spoiler and I'm not really going to mention like specifics, but Emily Henry did kind of shout out other characters from one of her other books. And that is just so freaking cool. Like I absolutely love when authors kind of like hint at the fact that all of their books take place in the same universe or like all of the characters exist in the same universe. I just think that's so freaking cute and I love that so much. I think something I'm really enjoying about this too that I wasn't expecting to enjoy as much is how cute the best friends are in this book. Like I started putting in green tabs for any cute moments where there was just like really cute like friendship moments because I love how she says um we were loud and I'd never been loud before. I grew up in a quiet house where shouting only ever happened when my sister came home with a questionable new piercing or a new love interest or both. Because there was always so much shouting, there was deep silence afterwards in her home, so she always hated the silence. And she says, my best friends taught me a new kind of quiet, the peaceful stillness of knowing one another so well that you don't need to fill the space. And a new kind of loud, noise as a celebration, as the overflow of joy at being alive. Like, <sighs> It's just so cute. Like, not only is the romance in this book cute so far, but the friendships are also, like, just as cute, which I'm very excited about. Like, it's so cute when they have a flashback scene of, like, when they you know, grew up in this cottage in Maine, like some of their summers there. I've never had friends like this. Sabrina and I nodded, the three of us holding hands until we drifted off. Like, 
they're just so cute. Like I'm adoring this group of friends so much. I also really love just like the buildup of this romance and the way that she writes them together. Like I love in their first conversation where they had that thing about how she's a slow release hot. <laughs> And I love when she says, I feel the moment his gaze lifts off of me and returns to the windshield, but he's left a mark. From now on, dark cliffs, wind racing through hair, cinnamon paired with cloven pine, all of it will only mean Win Connor to me. A door has opened and I know I'll never get it shut again. In a lot of ways, he ruins me. Like, oh, it's just so well written. Like, I don't know, I just think it's so beautiful. I'm definitely curious to see where it's going at this point, you know, because at this point in time, we don't know why they've broken up. Like, we don't know exactly what happened, between them and I'm really curious about that. I'm really curious to see what actually went on between them. I mean, at this point in time, I am really liking both the main protagonist character and the love interest, Wynn. I really love Wynn in the flashback chapters, but in the present day, he's like, he's obviously a little bit cold with her because they've broken up, you know? So like, I'm really curious to see why that is and like what actually happened between them. I think so far, um, just in comparison to the other Emily Henry that I've read, I feel like this one is reminding me the most of people we meet on vacation. It has like a lot of similar vibes to that one, which I'm happy about, you know, because I really loved people we meet on vacation. So anyways, I think, you know, it's about one o'clock in the afternoon and I just got an email that some of my library holds have come in. So I think I might just take a quick trip to the library to pick up my library holds. I might also, you know, maybe get a coffee and go chill at the park and read some more of this because I don't know, I see so many people on Instagram being like reading happy place while I'm in my happy place. And then they post about how they're reading this book in like the most beautiful you know settings with like the most best ambiance and I'm like why shouldn't that be me like it's a little bit cloudy and gloomy out today but I really feel like it could be a nice day to just go and sit in the park and read this book so I don't know let's go do it <laughs> oh my god chapter 11 <gasps> chapter 11 got me it got me! Hi! I'm good, how are you? Can I just do a 16 ounce ice caramel macchiato? Sure. That'll be it, thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, you too. Hi, hello, I just pulled up to the park and I was able to, I went to the gas station, I got gas in my car and then I went to the library. I dropped off some things and then I also picked up one of my library holds. And then I also stopped by one of my favorite local coffee spots and just got an iced coffee because why not? You know, I'm kind of laughing at myself because like literally as soon as I left the apartment, it started raining. Like what the heck, it hasn't been raining all day. And then of course, as soon as I leave the apartment, it starts dumping rain. But luckily now that I just pulled up at the park it's stopped raining and it's actually really nice out right now it has that like you know that fresh smell like right after it's rained oh my god i love that like that's like my favorite scent ever i don't know why that scent really reminds me of like it makes me feel nostalgic for like when i first moved to washington i don't know the washington air gets so crispy right after it's rained it's just the best feeling ever but i did want to update you because i have still been reading happy place and i'm now up to chapter 16 i'm on page 166 and this book is just absolutely flying by I am loving it so much. I feel like after chapter 11, chapter 11 is where things really took a turn for me, at least in terms of like how I was feeling about these characters because you know, for the first like 10 chapters, I guess, sorry, that bird is really loud. Um, <laughs> but for the first 10 chapters, I was like, I mean, this is cute, but is it like gonna be a five star? Like, am I obsessed with it? Like, I don't know. Dude, can you chill please? 
the heck? I'm trying to film. I'm sorry the birds are loud, but what I'm trying to say is that ever since chapter 11, I have been absolutely obsessed. Like, they are so fucking cute. Like, now they're the kind of cute that's got me, like, kicking my feet in shit, you know? Like, that's the kind of cute I'm talking about, and I'm just really enjoying it. I'm really enjoying these characters. I think, um, you know, it's about two o'clock in the afternoon, and so before it starts raining again, I think I want to take a quick little walk around the park and just pop in the audiobook, because I do have the audiobook from Libro, and I think, you know, I know the kids are probably going to get out of school with in like the next hour. I don't know exactly what time the local schools around here get out, but I'm thinking this place is gonna get swarmed with children in the next hour. So like, I might as well get out there and enjoy it before that happens, right? Before the kids come and ruin the ambiance. So that's what I'm gonna do. Hopefully it doesn't rain on me. Waking up in my bed, just as stuck in my head. I'm not even hungover I wanna call your phone Tell you what you did wrong Then ask it to come over Not very good with decisions Know what's right but I don't listen I don't I don't And I complain and dismiss it Then I keep on reminiscing I know I know Hi. So I was sitting out there for probably uh, probably a good like 30 or 45 minutes and then it just started raining. Like god damn it. I mean, I'm so glad that the universe, you know, allowed me to enjoy like 30 to 45 minutes just like sitting in the park before it started raining again. Um so it was lovely. I I just noticed it was raining because I kept noticing things like dripping onto my book and I was like, "Oh, that's weird. Like what's going on with the tree?" And then I was like, "Oh, shit." Like, it's raining again. That's cool. I'm glad I just made it back to my car in time, though, because it's really starting to come down now. But I just got up to chapter 20. I'm on page 212. And of course, it starts raining, like, right when I'm getting to a really, like, oh, steamy scene. And I'm, like, so excited. Like, things are happening. And then, of course, my, the universe is like, no, it's raining. You need to <laughs> you need to go back to your car. I'm like, oh, my God, dude. These two are so cute. I feel like now, anytime I think about Montana or hear anything about Montana or even Maine, I think it's gonna remind me of them and I'm gonna get big feelings. Oh, I'm not ready to go home yet though. You know, it's not even, it's almost three o'clock. It's a few minutes until it's three o'clock. I think I just wanna stay out here for at least like another hour, maybe like another 30 minutes. I'm just gonna um chill here in my car. I might roll my window down, even though it is starting to rain, like my car is getting wet. But um, I just don't wanna go back to the apartment yet. I still have, you know, my iced coffee. I'm just chilling. So I think I do want to stay here a little while longer and read a little bit more. And then I'll probably head home around four and have dinner with Rachel and Obed. But like, ugh. This book is just everything right now. It's giving. I also feel like I haven't done this in a while where I just like come down here to the local park and like sit in the park and read. Like I forgot how amazing it is to sit in the park and read. But of course, you know, in Washington, it's literally May and it's like raining. It just rains in Washington all the time. Like I love it. I love it. Don't get me wrong. I freaking love it. But also some days like I just want to sit in the park and like not have it rain on me, you know? Anyways, let's continue with it because my heart is bursting on this scene that I'm on right now, chapter 20. Ugh. I just got home from the park 
You know what sucks is when you're at a park, right, and the, you know, the parking lot is completely deserted, like not a single soul around, and then a car decides to pull up and literally park right next to you. Like literally, what the fuck? I hate that so much. Like that is one of my biggest pet peeves. It's like the same kind of thing when you're at the gym, right? And like the entire gym is completely empty. Like every machine is available. And then somebody has to come up and get on that fucking, you know, treadmill that's like right next to you. And you're like, really dude? Personal space. To be fair, maybe those people didn't really realize that I was in my car and that I was like chilling there. But at the same time, like that parking lot was so huge. Like why do you go to park literally right next to me? Anyways, um, that was just a little bit of a complaint, but I did want to update you because I am now on page 296. Oh my gosh, I'm getting, I'm getting to the, um, intense scenes. I literally was reading chapter 29 while I was driving, okay? I was like, oh my god, like, shit was going down in chapter 29 so much to the point where I was like, do I need to pull over and cry? What? <laughs> what? And then after I, like, pull, I pulled up at the apartment and then I just completely reread chapter 29 and was annotating it because I was like, um, I need to, I need time to process all of the things that just happened in that chapter. I thought I was safe, you know, because I was like, oh, if I'm driving, maybe I'll just read a chapter that's like not that important or where not a lot of stuff happens so I don't have to worry about like annotating and following along. But like, no, I picked the worst fucking chapter possible to drive to because so much happened in chapter 29. So I've read it twice. I'm now on chapter 30. My heart is just like in my throat. I love this so much. Like at this point in time, I don't think that there's any chance that I won't give this book five stars. Like I don't want to, I don't want to jinx it, you know, knock on wood, but oh my God, I'm obsessed. I'm loving it. I'm just, I love it so much. Um, it hurts me. And so I think I'm definitely going to be finishing this up. I mean, I have like less than a hundred pages at this point. I think I only have like 90 pages left. Oh, I'm not ready for this to end. But at the same time, like I knew this was gonna be a book that I would try to read within like one day or like one sitting because Emily Henry just got that writing. You know, it just hooks you immediately. I just have to know. I just have to finish this story at once. Anyways, I think it's about four o'clock. It's like 4.15 in the afternoon right now. I think I am going to continue reading for a little bit and then we'll probably make dinner. And I'm probably gonna try to finish this up tonight because <laughs> I lose my breath whenever I see you You stole my heart What is it that you do? My life was great Till you added color It's a little bit later in the night. It's almost nine o'clock. The sun is just going down. I took a shower and I washed my hair. I also made some dinner for all of us tonight. Oh my gosh, I made the, uh, you know, the orange chicken from Trader Joe's. And then I also made the chicken chow mein. That's like a big fave in our house. Um, we really enjoyed the chicken chow mein from Trader Joe's. It is so freaking good. But anyways, I'm here to update you because I have finished a happy place. And I'm so, so happy to let you know that this was definitely a five star for me. This was such an incredible romance. It was so freaking cute. It was everything that I would have wanted. I love the way that this story wrapped up. I feel like Emily Henry did a really great job with making their conflicts feel realistic without like ruining the characters. Cause I feel like so often in romance books, you know, it's like depending on that third act kind of conflict, 
usually I start to think one of the characters is kind of a douchebag or like, you know, depending on the author and the situation, I feel like sometimes that third act conflict can be so hard to get perfect because it's like you want it to feel realistic and you want to understand both sides and like where both characters are coming from. And I just feel like Emily Henry does such a great job with that. If you are curious about my ranking for this book in terms of like how it compares to the other Emily Henry books. So I think Book Lovers is still like my number one from Emily Henry. I'm pretty sure Sure, just because that book just really spoke to me. I really loved the Schitt's Creek kind of vibes in that one. And that one, to me, had one of the most relatable protagonists that I've ever read about in a book. So I think that one for me has still got to be like my number one. But then I'm debating whether Happy Place would be in my number two spot. It just feels so fresh. You know, like I just finished reading this. It feels right to put it in the number two spot and then to have People We Meet on Vacation in third. But it's been so long since I've read People We Meet on Vacation. So like I would need to do a reread to, you know, confirm that but I do think this is probably my second favorite just because oh my god these two characters I just really adored these two characters and I feel like towards the second half of this book uh this one got a lot more heavy than I was anticipating you know like this one definitely had some themes that were like a lot more serious and it made the book feel a lot more serious at times but it also just made the romance like so much better I think because it got so much more serious towards the end in a way and this book just had so many tropes that I really love and not only was like the romance really good but it was also like I don't know the friendships were also so good like I was so impressed by how fleshed out the friendship group was like I was really invested in all of their friends I feel like I also really relate to Sabrina like which is one of the girls that she's really close with in this book because she kind of talks about during this book how how she always feels like she's the one that has to like plan these things and like she's the one keeping them all friends you know like she's the one who always has to reach out first and she's the one that texts the group first and like she feels like she's the only one initiating things still and I totally relate to that and understand where she's coming from and I feel like how much that sucks you know to be the friend that feels like they're always the one reaching out I'm just so amazed so happy that I read this book it was such a freaking joy to read this book I also just really love the name Win for a guy like I don't think I've ever heard that name used for a man before I mean I, one of my closest friends in real life her name is Winter and so we call her Win. and so you know I've only really heard that name used for girls I don't remember what it said um Win was short for I think he does have like a full name and that Win was like short for a longer name but I can't remember what his full name was no maybe it was just Win because I think she would call him like Win Cooper and then that was his full name which I fucking love that like I love the name Win for a guy I think that's so freaking and cute. Anyways, I did want to jump into like some spoilery things at the end of this just so I can say my thoughts about a few different things. And so the last bit of this video will be full of spoilers from this point forward. So please, I will have a spoiler warning on the screen, but the rest of this video, I'm just going to be talking about some spoilery thoughts about this book. So if you would like to stick around, spoilers ahead. At the beginning, when you're trying to figure out like why they had broken up to begin with, I was really curious to see what the reason was going to end up being. And then throughout the story, you start to see in those flashbacks how his dad like Wynn's dad died pretty suddenly and it was really hard on him and it was really hard you know to read those chapters where you just see that he's slowly like going into this depression and it's really awful and she doesn't know what to do or what to say to him and then they start to do this like long distance thing because he goes back home to take care of his mom because then his mom is dealing with like some Parkinson's and that part of the book was just really sad you know and like really hard to read but I do think it's kind of I don't know, I appreciate that it's it feels very realistic for a relationship to fall apart because of grief because, you know, I think grief and especially like losing a parent, like I can't imagine how awful and hard that is to lose a parent. And so I can't even imagine the kind of grief that you go through when you lose a parent and how that'll definitely like affect the relationships in your life. And so I just really appreciated how realistic that was because it was kind of like a miscommunication trope in a way because like they wouldn't really tell each other how they were feeling. They were just making assumptions about how the other person was feeling. But I still feel like it was done in a really like realistic way. Like this is what happens with people with relationships sometimes. I also love too throughout this book how, you know, our our main protagonist Harriet she's a nurse and she's talking about how she doesn't know if she wants to continue working in medicine because she doesn't really love this job the way that she used to 
and she doesn't think she's cut out for something like this and I love how we get to see her character kind of like build the confidence to like leave her job and do something that she loves even though it's something that her family is like really against her doing and just you know her relationship with her family in general was really interesting and kind of hard to read because they're the kind of family that they put all of these expectations on her and their their house was always really like not a safe place for her or she never really felt safe in her own home or at least not comfortable and so I loved the character arc of like getting to see her at the end you know like quitting her job in medicine and going and doing something that she loves that's more like art related. I also too loved all the conversations about how you know how he was like I don't want you to just like make your whole life about me and like leave your whole life behind and move to Montana because he was like I don't want you to start you know resenting me over time and she's like but what if all I want is you <laughs> and like that was just so beautiful like ugh. but I'm glad you know that these characters like I like that they took their time with like getting back together and making sure that their lives were compatible again I'm also like, I know it's such a like cheesy romance thing, but I love, like I'm such a sucker for those scenes at the end of the book where they go on like a full rant about listing all the things that they love about them, you know? <laughs> because, you know, there are a few moments in this book where these characters will have, you know, certain insecurities. Like say for example, he is talking about how he's like afraid that he like peaked in high school, you know, because he was like prom king in high school. And he's like, that's so embarrassing. Like it doesn't mean anything. And he's just kind of like talking about all of his insecurities and she just goes on a rant about how amazing he is and we find out that he's been like building furniture and like that is so cool and it's like so sad that he's like afraid that people will get bored of him like once they get to know him I'm like dude that is <laughs> That's like so sad, but also like so relatable in a way. Like, I don't know, I just really appreciated that conversation that they had about it. One part too that really like broke my heart towards the end of the book is when she had that conversation with her mom and she was just basically saying like, I'm sorry that this isn't gonna look good for your Christmas cards this year, but like this is my life and my choice and this is what I wanna do. And her mom kind of like pulled her aside later on and she's like, it's not about that. Like, I'm just afraid because you're changing your whole life for a man and she's kind of implying that like she did the same thing and she has regrets about that and it was just so sad because her mom was like you know all I want is for you to be happy and then she said back to her mom well what about you don't you want to be happy and she looks so baffled like the thought had never occurred to her and she said no one else's happiness is yours to grant mom you need to find yours and I was like oh my god that is so uh and it helped me to like understand her mom's character better and to know that like she wasn't ever against her doing you know like leaving her job or anything it was just that she didn't want her daughter to make you know the same mistakes that she feels like she did then I love to like the final line of the book was just so cute because it says he will be waiting on the other side it's still covered in sawdust and smelling like pine before I even see him my heart starts singing its favorite song you 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 that was so cute because that was kind of a reference to like one of their little inside jokes earlier in the book with like the you, you, you thing. Oh my God, I love that so much. You know, if I had any critiques about this book or like the writing, I would say I think it's kind of hilarious like how often she refers to this man as like smelling like pine or like cinnamon or clover. I feel like she kind of overuses that the same way that like Ali Hazelwood definitely overuses the whole like his legs are the size of tree trunks and he's just so tall and he's so big. You know, I feel like sometimes romance authors like they're either really attracted to like a specific thing about a man like being huge or it's like how he smells. Like in this book, I don't know how many times she said like, oh my God, he smells like pine and clover and cinnamon it's like okay I get it like he must smell just freaking fantastic but like I think that was a little overused but that's like my only nitpick with this I don't know I had such a good time reading this book and yeah you'll have to let me know if you have read Happy Place what are your thoughts on this one and how does this book compare to you for the other Emily Henry books yeah Happy Place it was great I was very happy while I read it I can't believe I read this entire book within like less than 12 hours you know I was gonna make this reading vlog all cute and be like reading Happy Place within 24 hours and like like, no, I read it within 12 hours. I think I read it in less than 10 hours. I just flew through this entire thing and clearly I just had a great time, you know? Like I tabbed a whole bunch and so I've just, ugh. Emily Henry has done it again. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching as always and I will see you very soon with another video. Bye.